This video is brought to you by Sporlin. Quality, integrity, and tradition. Today we have a walk-in freezer evaporator that is not working. Um, the complaint was that they have soft ice cream. And yeah, that's the case because ice cream is dripping everywhere. Um, what I found back in here is that we've got a freeze-up problem, but the freeze-up problem is a little peculiar, kind of indicative of a TXV problem. But we will see. I gotta get it defrosted and then we'll further test everything. Let's see, I've literally got ice cream dripping out the bottom of their thing, so. I've showed this numerous times, but when I defrost evaporator coils, I take everything out, fan motors, fan blades, and everything. I find it to be more effective in my opinion, and uh, it goes a lot faster when you just pull everything out and then you can just go to town and get them defrosted. I defrost from the inside out, that way I'm not making a mess, but just in case I did put hands down here to try to catch any overflow that might happen, so. It is a very slow process, it's, it's not a race. Even though I wanna do it as fast as possible, we still take our time and I just basically spray until the water gets above the drain nipple, which is there in the back, and then I stop. I don't ever want the water to be leaking out onto the floor. So we just do it in bursts. Little bursts, get a little bit of stuff going on. I like this wand for this too, just like I like it for everything else, but from the top down, a little bit at a time. So I made quick work of defrosting it. It's all defrosted all the way through to the back. Uh, and the expansion valve section is defrosted too. There's no light right there, but yeah, it's all good. So now we're gonna assemble it, turn the system on, uh, and then check the evaporator superheat and troubleshoot the rest of the system, so. This expansion valve is acting wonky. Probably has a bad power head. I'm not a fan of these Emerson valves. They're kind of junky, um, especially since you can't change the power heads on them. So uh, they're gonna be fine for tonight, but we're gonna have to come back and change that power or change that expansion valve. So we are back today. Um, the unit had uh, ice on the evaporator coil again in the same weird frost pattern just at the top of the coil. So I went ahead and took care of that real quick, defrosted it. The unit's back on and running. We are running with a clear sight glass. We are running with, uh, let's see. Our superheat's about 30 degrees and dropping. The box is still a little bit warm, but I know that we've got a valve that's bad. We've got a 24 degree box temp right now. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, pump this guy down and go ahead and get ready to uh, change the expansion valve. And then uh, we'll go from there. Something to think about. There's always something about these cold pack or RDI. It's all the same. I'm not trying to talk crap, but there's always something about the way that they do their receivers and it's just silly. So this receiver has a king valve, but if you notice, we have zero PSI and um, I just front seated the king valve and pumped the system down. So the way that they set up this receiver, there's no pressure or this is on the... Uh, the outlet side of the king valve basically, which I don't like because it makes it hard for you to look at discharge pressure when you're pumping the system down. Discharge pressure is very important when you're pumping a system down to find out if the system possibly is overcharged or um, it wasn't sized right because there's some systems that you can't pump down. Just one of my pet peeves, I have a suction transducer or suction pressure probe downstairs on the evaporator so I know that the suction pressure pumped down but it's just frustrating when you can't put your high side on there and monitor the system pressures. So you would have no idea and you would hope that the high pressure control would work if the system was overcharged and trying to pump down. So I've got my nitrogen rig hooked up. We're pushing down through the liquid line. It's coming back up on the suction line. Uh, I am gonna have to de-energize the coil eventually. Right now there's a solenoid valve that's open, but I'll go ahead and put my solenoid valve magnet on the coil once I do that. I got my solenoid valve magnet here. So we'll go ahead and put this guy on there and then that way we don't have to have power going to the coil to energize the solenoid valve and we can still push nitrogen through. Um, as you get into these low temp boxes, I'm not saying it's important. It's not important on a medium temp box, but as you get into the lower temp boxes, moisture contamination is very, very um, important that you don't have any because uh, as you get to the sub-zero temperatures, um, the moisture can really become a problem. It can freeze in the system. It can make these valves stick. You know, it can cause all kinds of things. And again, I'm not saying it's not important on medium temp or on air conditioning, but it's even more important than any of the other 
on the ultra low or on the low temp equipment so well, it's not always desirable working in these walk-ins so i've got this valve sanded up we're gonna have to unsweat it um i'm working on getting the sensing bulb but like i'm sitting on top of a shelf i mean there's no room up in here so you know you gotta you gotta try to think smart and make it easier by trying to be prepared so we're gonna get that strap undone and see if we can't get this thing unswept and the new one put in it's kind of a pain but it is what it is it's not too much of a surprise they they didn't give me any room to mount the sensing bulb look at look at that it's just stupid Urgh, frustrating so we'll see what we can do to fix this it's kind of a pain in the butt I'd rather not mount it on the vertical if I don't have to. Well, I got all the insulation ripped off because it was saturated anyways and I'll end up redoing it. But check this out. So I don't know what they were doing, but they put a joint in the middle. So if I eliminate this joint, I can brace here and I can brace here and I can have a solid piece of pipe for the uh, Sensi bulb to mount to. So that's the plan. We're just kind of seeing what all we need to do to make that happen. But we have the uh, thing all sanded up and ready to go. I went ahead and grabbed my rosebud tip so I can pull those out real quick. We're going to try to uh, cut the joint right here, then unsolder, and then uh, we'll uh, sweat the new one in and hopefully it'll be a nice clean spot for the sensing bolt to mount now. All right. Let's see if we can't get this to work. Hopefully my tubing cutter don't get stuck like that. Always works out to be a pain in the butt like this, but you know, it is what it is. You just gotta learn to deal with it, take your punches. Lovely, we're gonna have to fight some oil. Hopefully we can get this in. Let's 
It's hot. There we go. Yeah, let's hope I can seal this up. Kind of tricky with that oil in there. There's definitely more than enough solder on there. I tend to go a little heavy, especially when I'm working on a joint like this that's becoming problematic. Um, I'm hoping we didn't get any oil contamination. One of those things you just gotta learn to work with. So we're gonna inspect this joint, make sure we had an even flow. Looks good. And you see how when I when I saw it, when I brazed those, I pulled the solder on the top and then I let it drip down. Yeah, we got plenty of solder. Looks like it got in the joint nice and good. Cool this guy off. Remember, we're pushing nitrogen still through that, so. Now we got a nice clean spot to put our sensing bulb. You also, another thing you gotta be careful about is uh, I'm filling this box up with smoke and it's displacing the oxygen in here. So as I step off the ladder, it's probably going to be really nasty. So you probably want to open the door and let some air through, ventilate this thing a little bit. Let it cool and then do another inspection. Okay, so now we're going to get in here. I don't think I can get a camera angle to show this, but I'm just going to unsweat that valve, put a new solenoid valve, pipe it back to there. All right, so now we got a nice clean spot for the sensing bulb to mount to. I still got to figure out the insulation. We'll do that here in a few minutes. We got to do a leak check on this guy too. Push this bushing back in there. And I'll show you guys the valve. It was a pain to, uh, to braze in. Here's the valve over here. It's brazed in. It was just a pain because I had to redo some stuff. I ended up putting in a new solenoid valve. I got to go get a coil for it. Um, so I've got the magnet on it for the moment. And then, uh, yeah, everything's looking good. We'll clean it up, we'll insulate it, and we'll get a, uh, um, 
a vacuum. I still gotta change the dryer and install a sight glass too. All right, we're gonna try to get this guy all figured out right now. Gotta get a liquid line dryer and a sight glass in here. First thing we're gonna do is start with unbrazing what we need to unbraze and then we'll figure everything out from that point forward. Always uh, take a steel brush to the ends on this. Make sure you get the stuff out of the grooves. Good, good. The threads are a little fudged up. Hopefully, uh, sight glass goes on there okay. Yeah, they seem a little like warped or something. I don't know. Yeah, they're threading on fine. Cool. Be okay. All right. When you're putting these male females on there, they never line up right, so don't stress. And watch out for the copper ring that just fell out of the, this has to be in there. Make sure you get this copper ring back in there, because that's how it's meant to be on there so it can seal properly. So, uh, dryer should be pointing into the sight glass, a little bit of nylog. Put a little bit on the mating surface too. Don't gotta go crazy. And then we'll tighten it on. Should be good. Always tighten them down to the proper torque setting. Do as I say, not as I do. good again it's you know they, they don't always line up so don't stress it so if I put this guy right here yep I can see the sight glass just fine so that's what we're gonna do sometimes I'll utilize these other times I, I brought my flaring block up because I didn't know if I was gonna make a flare or not but I'll use this this will make it easier okay then I got some of this Put this guy right here, like that, and then, yeah, we'll make a, a bend with this, I brought my bender up. Oh, you know what, I think I screwed up. Let's see if I did or not. Oh no, it looks like it'll work. I thought I made it too short. But no, it looks like it'll work. Okay, so we need to mark it where we want it. Right there. And we need to cut this top one shorter too, by a hair. I didn't measure it, but I could tell it needed to be a little bit shorter, so we'll go about half inch. Half inch shorter. Thing, a quick little rub with the sandpaper and then we'll ream out our pipe okay if these go
guys a quick little spin with the sandpaper. Okay. Good. Okay, so what I'm going to do is take these channel locks, just bend it a little bit, same thing right here. Now I can take the dryer and sight glass off, and the, the fittings will stay where they're at. I can braze them in. Although, now see this bottom one doesn't want to braze in. Raise this guy on real quick, nothing fancy. Hopefully it holds, my little trick works. Nice and good. Cool this guy off. Brass got really hot. Good little braze joint, no problems. We gotta give it a little purge with some nitrogen. There we go. I just turned my nitrogen rig up and blew any stuff that was in there out. Let's cool this guy. That nylog, put it right on the top right here, and move the flare around. And you're gonna lubricate it because right now it's so hot that it's like binding up. So we want it to flow freely. We're gonna use it just like an oil, lubricate the mating surface, nice and good. That's cool. Do the same thing on this one, just right on the mating surface, right up here. Spin it, nice and good. Looks good. I like it. Okay, we can go ahead and place our dryer in there. And I can actually go ahead and uh, lubricate this with Nylog now. Just a teeniest bit right on the mating surface.
might need to torque on that top one just a little bit more. But I'm going to braise in that bottom well or braise joint. Make sure that. Hmm. Okay, cool. I was making sure that we were still getting pressure coming out of here, and we are. Making sure that my solenoid magnet was still working. That guy with the mirror real quick. Make sure it's a clean braze joint. It is. Those are good. We got towel on there. And then let's try to get just the tiniest turn on this guy. I just want to get a little bit more. There we go. Alright, that's all we need. So we're tightened up. We're ready to vacuum the system down. We'll give it a purge with nitrogen real quick. Coming through nice and good. And then we'll go down and get the vacuum rig and uh, go from there. Baby steps. So um, I got my insulation kind of all, I, I, you know, figured out what I wanted to do with my insulation. I'm going to try to make it one piece and then just glue the edges so it'll be like a perfect 90. Hopefully. Seems like it's going to work. So we're going to put it together right now. I cut it on all the seams. So it should work out, we'll see. So I am no way an insulation expert, but I glued all the seams. It seems like it's nice and tacky. I put a piece over right here and then we're gonna wrap it with tape and get it nice and pretty. It's not gonna be perfect. So I'd love to have a P-trap here too, but there's just no room without redoing the line set on the roof. All right, so I just turned it back on and we've got a pretty even frost pattern doesn't look like it's frosting up just on the top anymore and uh, let's see the expansion valve looks nice and good in here so we're gonna let it come down in temp I'm actually gonna change the door hinges on this guy so here's just a little view I ended up putting two new door hinges and then a door closure on the the door so that way it closes properly all by itself all right, so we are doing much better. Now, granted, we're still at 17 degrees superheat, but my box temp is still a little high. So um, it's not quite down to temperature yet. I'm not gonna crank on the valve because uh, I have a feeling it'll drop back down where it's supposed to. Usually don't wanna start cranking on it. So we're at 15 degrees in the box right now and we need to get down to negative 10. So if it was at negative five and I had 15 degrees superheat, I'd start adjusting on it, but these valves, to be honest with you, they're, they're pretty much factory set on the Sporlin ones. Um, you can usually get about 8 to 10 degrees superheat on the Sporlin valves without having to do much at all. Um, so we'll do a follow up on another day, uh, but I'm super stoked with the way that this thing's working. Um, everything's looking good. We got, a, again, even frost pattern on the coil. I'm a happy camper. So we're going to wrap it up and uh, tell them to keep an eye on it. So this turned out to be an extremely long day. When I returned, the coil was frozen up just like it was the first time. So I ended up having to spend, you know, an hour defrosting it. And then after that, that's when I started in on changing the expansion valve. But altogether between changing the expansion valve, you know, piping the stuff, the dryer on the roof, taking everything up and down, um, I was in this for about eight and a half hours, changing the hinges, all that good stuff. So it was a pretty long day. But anyways, so... Um, we had a dead giveaway of some kind of a problem with the expansion valve. Now, I, I was a little bit worried when I found that sensing bulb and how it was mounted to the suction line, but I don't know if that was the complete cause because that had been like that for like three years. So I can't see, and we haven't been having this icing up problem for three years. So I can't see the sensing bulb improperly being strapped being the only problem. 
I'm pretty confident we had a problem with that expansion valve. Okay. And you know, when I had 30 degrees superheat on the evaporator, when it was like, what was it like 15 or 10 degrees or something like that? That's, you know, that's unheard of. And then you could just tell by the way that it was icing up. So I went ahead and uh, replaced the valve. Um, and you saw, you know, I never saw the box completely come down to temp, but I was very happy with the way that it was performing after, especially the fact that we saw like a clean frost pattern. That was the biggest thing. So um, everything seemed to be working properly. Customer was happy. The biggest thing was, was I put new hinges on that door. So now it shuts because before we were having nothing but problems with them leaving that door open and it was constantly becoming an issue. So went ahead and uh, put those hinges on. Those were good. You know, the one thing about those hinges is, is they had these little security screws, the one-way screws, they're stainless steel one-way screws. Um, if you guys haven't dealt with those, they can be a chore, especially getting them out. I actually have a special bit set that I use to get them out. And then if, if for whatever reason, because even on some of them, they were pretty bad and the bit, the special little security bit set wouldn't get them out. Um, then what I do is just take a grinder and just notch a straight um, flat, notch inside the screw and then just use a flathead screwdriver to back them out. But once you do that, you got to replace them with new screws. Uh, the important thing is, is, and this is for the hinges, the important thing is, is that you use stainless steel because if you don't, the next time you go to change those hinges in about a year, a year and a half or so, um, they're all going to be rusted in there and nasty. So make sure you go back in with stainless steel stuff. So, um, but yeah, other than that, guys, that was pretty much it. Um, nothing too crazy, just a long day, you know, just got to follow the, go through the motions and, you know, follow your procedures and make sure you do everything the right way. And it all comes together at the end, hopefully. So I really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch these videos. Uh, please send me an email with any questions you have, hvacrvideos at gmail.com. And, uh, you know, leave me comments, whatever. I really appreciate it. Okay. And, uh, we will catch you guys on the next one.